Welcome to the British Columbia Aviation Museum. My name is Linda Stagg, and I am honored to introduce Fran Benton, who built the quickie that's on display here at the museum, along with Gordon Hilsden, her husband. But first, a short video to show you how a quickie looks in the air and on the ground. The quickie in the video, however, is not this one. So Fran, what made you want to build an aircraft, and in particular, a quickie? Well, what I was really interested in, Linda, was the fact that uh, I was up north and I was flying around in small aircraft uh, for my job. I was a field biologist for the University of Saskatchewan, and I worked on lichens. And they sent us all over the Northwest Territories collecting specimens. And of course, they sent us by small planes. And I really got the bug. It was so exciting to fly. I wanted to learn to fly, too. Now, I understand you met your husband, Gordon, while you were working on the Quickie? I did. It was quite interesting. I got my license in Saskatoon, and then immediately when I got back home to Victoria after my three-year contract, I joined the flying club and I got the idea of building a plane because I saw a picture of the quickie in a magazine and I took one look at it and I thought that thing is a sculpture. It's, it's half bird, half insect and it's gorgeous. I have to build one of those and I thought well I could probably do it. I could do lots of other things. And uh, so I got the kit, I joined the Experimental Aircraft Association, and that's how I met Gord. He quite politely asked me one day if I'd like some help putting the engine on, and I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Gord, what, what do you have to add to putting the engine on? <laughs> well, the, the engine and the, the wiring and the avionics, all that stuff was all done. And, but I also helped out a lot with the sanding, because there was a lot of sanding. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, hours and hours of sanding, really. So. so, where did you build this? Oh, I started in my mother's basement. My poor mother, she was such a long-suffering person. But my mother had the interesting uh, characteristic of being a curious woman. She really enjoyed something different and unusual, and as her daughter, I provided her with lots of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, she was willing to let me build it there, so I spent two years in her basement. Then we moved it out to the airport here, and uh, we essentially started at the hangars at the far end and moved all our way down to the flying club. So we were two years in um, Nils' hangar, then two years in the flying fireman, and we'd more or less finished it by then, just a few bits of this and that, and we moved to the Flying Club hangar, which is where we had it when we decided to donate it to the Air Museum. Well, let's move up a bit to what came in the kit. Well, 
I'll let Gord answer that because that was a shock. <laughs> yes, the, well the, the kid is actually uh, uh, more of a, a pile of materials, like raw materials, like blocks of foam, uh, uh, rolls of cloth, buckets of epoxy resin, and, and it's uh, up to you to build it from that. And, uh, so it's... Uh, not you know, it's not really a, a bolt, you know, when you hear the word kit, you think of like, say, a, a, a bottle kit where you open the box and start putting things together. And Some assembly required. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, assembly. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's right. So it's, it, it's a lot of work. Fred had to make some specialized tools to, for it, like the, uh, the foam cutting saw, a hot, you know, a hot wire to cut through the foam to get the, the proper curves on the wings and stuff. So. And even the um, the epoxy to, that you put in to put over the cloth and that you had to actually make the balance to weigh it all out. It, it was actually not horribly complicated, just a whole ton of work. And I'm amazed at some points, I wondered if I'd ever finish it, but Gordon and I just kept sanding away and you, you just kept on with it working and pushing it forward and it finally got complete. The trouble is it had a couple of really big design flaws and the first thing is it's only a one-person airplane and the second which is I mean it is what it is but the second thing that was just impossible for me is it's so hard to start. It doesn't have uh, an internal starter because it has to be very very light because it's so small um, and to start it, you have to spin the prop. Only props on some of the large planes around the Air Museum is simply you grab the edge and pull it and it will start. This thing would take me 36 to 37 pulls to finally start it. And I did a lot of damage to my hand and my arm oh. just trying to start the plane. And that really in a nutshell is why it was so impossible to continue on with to try and fly because I couldn't start it myself. Yeah. Fran taxied the quickie 22 times from June 1989 to September 1990. Jack Kaiser flew the quickie four times from August September 1992 for a total of 2.4 hours. Then Fran donated it to the BC Aviation Museum in 1995. But I understand you've taxied it a number of times. I taxied it quite a lot. I think the guys in the tower after a while looked at me and went, when is she ever going to take it off? And I know one of the fellows there uh, said to me, we used to say to her, put the power on, put the power on, pull it off. And I thought, you know, I'd love to do that, but uh, I wasn't exactly scared stiff, but I'm a person with a fairly good sense of what's death-defying and what's safe. And uh, so I asked Jack Kaiser to test fly it for me. He did a brilliant job test flying it, but what he said to me was really interesting. He said, first off, he said, that's a twitchy little airplane. Twitchy. Now, twitchy. Now this is from a man that was an instructor in World War II, had how many hours of flying time? I think he had about 30,000 hours. I yeah. had 125. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I'm going to kill myself in that plane. He knew all the little faults and I just thought, oh dear, I don't know what to do. And we sat in a limbo for a while wondering what to do and then one day Gord said to me, why don't we donate it to the Air Museum? And I thought, brilliant. It did what it needed to do for me. I loved building it. I thought the design was wonderful. It felt like a piece of sculpture that I built. Um, I met Gord through that. I made so many friends. And it got me into art school because my instructors who were adjudicating whether to let me into graduate school for visual arts took one look at the plane and went, I think she probably could do this program. So it owes me nothing. Well, what I'm hearing here in the Quickie story is a love story on so many levels. Love of education, love of a aviation, love of three-dimension visual art, and the love between Fran and Gordon. And you can visit the Quickie right here at the BC Aviation Museum at YYJ.